Okay, got another problem up here on the board, and I just want to acknowledge this problem is from the textbook that we used to use, which is the book, calculus book by Anton Bivens and Davis. So I want to acknowledge them. I really liked this problem, so I just continued using it even when we switched textbooks. So we're trying to integrate this function, sine of x minus y over cosine of x plus y, where this is our region r. Now, in this case, it's not that I don't like the region R. I don't like the integrand because it just looks like a nightmare because the input to my trig functions is different. So I've got two different things that I'm plugging in, one to sine and one to cosine. So I'd really like to try to simplify this. And here, the integrand suggests to me what I want u and v to be. The integrand suggests that I want this to be u equals x minus y and v equals x plus y. That way the two pieces, the sine piece and the cosine piece, are separate from each other. One of them is going to be a function of u, the cosine one is going to be a function of v, they're not influencing each other. I like that. Okay. So I need to figure out what is my region s in the uv plane if I use that transformation. Okay. Well, if I take a look here, this was y equals x. Now notice, if y equals x, that's going to mean that x minus y is equal to 0. Okay. Well, if x minus y is equal to 0, that becomes u equals 0. So, u equals 0, the v-axis, is going to be a boundary curve for my region s. This line was y equals pi over 4 minus x. Notice that that means that x plus y is pi over 4. Lovely, that means that v is pi over 4. So that's going to give us a horizontal line here at height pi over 4. That's going to be part of the boundary of our region S. The third part of the boundary is the x-axis here, which is given by y equals 0. Now, if I look at y equals 0, that's going to mean that u is equal to x minus 0, and v is equal to x minus 0. That gives me a parametric curve. I described u and v in terms of x. They're the same. That's going to be the line in the uv plane, u equals v. That's just the line of slope 1 through the origin. So the three boundary lines here corresponds to these three boundary lines over here. This triangle is my region S. And now I'm going to be setting this up so that I'm going to be integrating over s sine of u over cosine of v scaling factor dA in the uv plane, where my scaling factor here, again, is going to be the absolute value of the Jacobian, partial xy, partial uv. Now, just like our last example, these equations, which were inspired by our original integrand, these equations give me u and v in terms of x and y, and I want the opposite. So, I'm just going to add them. If I add them, I get u plus v equals 2x, because the y's drop out, so x is equal to u plus v. Nice. Let's write that down over here. And I'm just going to, I'm sorry x is equal to u plus v over 2, and I'm just going to write that as u over 2 plus v over 2. Okay. Now, I can use that to solve for y, because basically y is going to be v minus x, just rearranging this equation. So that's going to be 2v over 2 minus u over 2 minus v over 2. So that's going to be v over 2 minus u over 2. Okay. So, if I look at the determinant that I get, 
partial x, partial u, partial y, partial u. Partial x, partial v, partial y, partial v. That determinant is going to be, let's see, partial x with respect to u is 1 half. Partial x with respect to v is 1 half. Partial y with respect to u is negative 1 half. Partial y with respect to v is positive 1 half. So my determinant is 1 quarter minus negative a quarter, so plus a quarter. So that's 2 quarters, or 1 half. My scaling factor is the absolute value of 1 half. Or maybe off to the side, I'd write absolute value of 1 half is 1 half. Now, it's not wrong if you just jump to 1 half. I know you know that the absolute value of 1 half is 1 half. I usually take the time to write out that I'm evaluating the absolute value because that way I don't forget when it is negative. There are going to be some times when it's positive. There are going to be some times when it's negative. When it's negative, I have to remember to take that absolute value. By the way, an interesting property of one-to-one -one transformations, the Jacobian should always be positive or always be negative on the region that we're working with. You'll never get into a situation, unless you make a mistake, um, in which you have to evaluate that absolute value function piecewise. It's either it's always positive or it's always negative on the region that we're working on. Okay, so I'm liking this. So now, this is my integral. Let me just clear some board space. And then we can do that. Where did I put, here we go, the cloth to erase. Huh. Oh, I probably wanted to keep the picture of that region. Oh, well, I'll redraw it. Okay. So we're doing the double integral over S of sine U over cosine V. There's a one half that I'm going to factor out, and we're integrating with respect to area in the UV plane. My region S was this lovely triangle, where this was the line V equals pi over 4, and this was just the line U equals V. So I want to write this as an iterated integral. I probably want to strategize a little bit about what I want to do first. I can either integrate with respect to U first, in which case I'm integrating sine, or I can integrate with respect to V first, in which case I'm integrating secant. Notice I would not be integrating cosine because that cosine is in the denominator. Now, I know how to integrate both of them, but sine is a lot easier. So I would prefer to integrate with respect to u first. If I'm going to do that, that means I'm going to set it up so that I'm slicing things this way so that I'm integrating with respect to u from the left to the right side of my slice. So this is going to be 1 half the integral. My outer limits of integration are going to be the v values, the constants where the slices start to where they end, so 0 to pi over 4. For each slice, my u value goes from 0 to the u value on this line, which is just v. <laughs> and then I'm integrating 1 over cosine v times sine u du dv. I'm just going to literally separate those. <laughs> so now I can say, okay, an antiderivative of sine, that's just going to be negative cosine. So we will have, oops, sorry, one half integral from 0 to pi over 4, 1 over cosine of v times negative cosine of u evaluated between v and 0, and then we'll still have to integrate dv. So that's one half integral from 0 to pi over 4, 1 over cosine of v, times negative cosine of, plugging in v here, it just becomes negative cosine of v, minus a negative, so plus cosine of 0, and cosine of 0 is just 1. <laughs> All right, so I get 1 half the integral from 0 to pi over 4. I'm going to now just distribute this in. Notice 1 over cosine of v times negative cosine of v is just negative 1 plus, now I do still have a secant of v. So I procrastinate it a little bit, but I'm still going to have to integrate secant. Okay, so let's see. I'm going to just split this up. 
this is going to become one half the integral from zero to pi over four of negative one dv plus one half the integral from zero to pi over four of secant of v dv. <laughs> All right, so here I'm integrating a constant, so I'm just going to get that constant times the length of my interval, which is pi over 4. This one we're going to have to work out, so let me clear some space. So let's see, this is going to be just negative pi over 8 plus, now we've got to still integrate 1 half the integral from 0 to pi over 4 of secant of v dv. Now I left some space there. The reason I left some space there is because I remember the trick for integrating secant. And the trick for integrating secant is to multiply by a clever form of 1. That form of 1 is secant v plus tangent v over itself. It's just a neat trick, but it's good to know. Okay? So I've got negative pi over 8 plus 1 half integral 0 to pi over 4. That becomes secant squared v plus secant v tan v on top over secant v plus tan v and then dv. Now notice the derivative of secant is secant times tangent. The derivative of tangent is secant squared. So if I do a w substitution, I'm feeling lazy, so I'm just going to write that w is the bottom function. dw is the top dv. <laughs> okay. So this becomes negative pi over 8 plus 1 half. Now my limits of integration are going to change. So I need the w value, which is the bottom value, at 0. Secant of 0 is 1, plus tangent of 0 is 0. 1 plus 0 is 1. At pi over 4, secant, remember, is the reciprocal of cosine. Cosine of pi over 4 is 1 over root 2. So its reciprocal is going to be 2. Tangent of pi over 4 is 1. 2 plus 1 is 3. And this becomes then 1 over w dw. So I'm going to get negative pi over 8 plus 1 half the natural log of the absolute value of w evaluated between 3 and 1. So that's negative pi over 8 plus 1 half times the natural log of 3 3 is positive, so its absolute value is itself. That's a number, not a variable. You don't need to justify that. Okay. Minus 1 half the natural log of 1. But what is the natural log of 1? Oh yeah, that's just 0. So I'm going to get negative pi over 8 plus the natural log of 3 over 2. A lovely and beautiful number indeed.